The thyroid gland, as we said, has a huge effect on metabolism. It's located in your neck, just under your larynx, and it's responsible for homeostasis. In particular, we look at metabolism, reproduction, and development. It produces two very similar hormones, T4 and T3 hormones, that are both going to be used in this regulation. As we've already said, the thyroid will release T3 and T4 if it receives the signal from the anterior pituitary to do so. And that signal is thyroid stimulating hormone. So we look at these hormones produced in the thyroid, but they will not be released until they're told to. So the thyroid stimulating hormone acts on the thyroid, and the thyroid releasing hormone acts on the pituitary gland. So this negative feedback system is under very tight control to regulate metabolism. The problem is things go wrong. Hyperthyroidism is actually an increase in T4 or T3 release, and sometimes the, this is caused by changes in the hypothalamus or in the anterior pituitary. Particularly, of course, we would be looking at the thyroid releasing hormone or the thyroid stimulating hormone as causing the thyroid to release too much T3 and T4. This actually produces a syndrome known as Graves disease. This does not mean you will die from it. The doctor's name was Graves, unfortunately. Hypothyroidism is too low T4 or T3. Again, this could be produced or caused because of the thyroid not behaving properly, but we can also look at the interactions of thyroid releasing and thyroid stimulating hormone having an effect. This leads to low blood pressure. Typically increased weight and often feeling issues associated with lethargic and always being cold. So this is essentially decreasing metabolism, right? In Graves' disease, though, we often see increased basal metabolic rates, sweating instances, always warm. Patients tend to be very thin and very nervous. Both of these conditions can be corrected by the prescription of T3 and T4, or the change in the thyroid releasing and thyroid stimulating hormones to regulate T3 and T4. Some folks will actually have their thyroid removed and will just deal with metabolism issues chemically so as to reduce these effects that they have in their system. So the thyroid gland actually requires iodine to produce thyroid hormones. And so what we see is a diet without iodine means that you actually are not going to produce T3 and T4 properly. So the TSH is still going to target the thyroid, and the thyroid is without iodine it cannot release T3 and T4. So we get a buildup that overstimulates the thyroid and causes it to enlarge when iodine is absent, and you end up with a goiter state. Now, in most of our diets, we get high levels of iodine thanks to Morton Salt Company. They are the first ones to add iodine to salt, and it is a was directly linked then to a decrease in the occurrence of goiters in the medical professions. Now, we have seen recently an increase in goiters again. Do you have any idea why that would be? Have we cut salt out of our diet? Think about the different types of salt that are now available. The next time you're in the grocery store, look and see which ones actually contain iodine.
if the thyroid fails to develop normally, we actually can end up with something known as cretinism in young individuals. This is actually a very high influence on the development or the lack of development of mental abilities. So we see cretinism directly tied to high instances of mental retardation. We look at this infantile appearance that remains forever as long as the individual survives. And of course, they don't survive very long. Um, a few years is, is the typical lifespan. And this is because if the thyroid is completely regulating metabolism and you don't produce the hormones through the thyroid that are required to grow and go through metabolism, you can't ever grow any larger than, than you are. We also deal in the thyroid, and in particular the parathyroid hormones, as we mentioned before, these antagonistic hormones. So let's look at a set of antagonistic hormones associated with your thyroid and parathyroid. Calcitonin is actually produced by the thyroid. It's another one in addition to T3, T4. And it decreases the calcium levels in the blood. which means, of course, that this is going to be stored in bone. The parathyroid, from the parathyroid glands, which sit behind the thyroid, they're little tiny pin-headed glands that sit on the thyroid. This is actually to increase the calcium levels in the blood to target things like muscle contractions and so on. So this is actually going to remove calcium from the bone. So these two hormones are constantly going back and forth to make sure that the calcium levels in the blood are proper for you to actually have muscle contractions and so on. So that regulation of blood calcium is critical. If we don't have proper blood calcium regulation, we actually go into a state of tetany. And essentially what this means is your muscles go into a constant state of contraction and we can't regulate our body movements in any way.